Tim asked, uh, please could you define what the mind is? Is it just an awareness of the present moment? Also, if we believe that the mind nor nothing else continues in further rebirths, how do we know that rebirth exists? Um, well, the, okay, so lo lots of questions there. The first one, the mind, mind is, is knowing. Mind is that which knows. A rock and a human being are different, but really the only, the only intrinsic difference is the mind. A rock doesn't know anything and doesn't have awareness. Um, not that we know of, anyway. But in our own experience, we can see that there are two, two parts. There's the physical and there's the mental. The mental is that which knows. Mind is, is the experience of knowing. Maybe you want to take the other part? What is it that goes from one life to the next? Mm, I think How do we know that rebirth exists? Sorry. I think we talked about that uh, earlier in, in earlier videos. Mm. It is... First you have to have a little bit of faith, not a belief, but a little bit of faith certainly is ne necessary. And um, then you start to, to investigate uh, what the Buddha said, and he is talking about rebirth and, and uh, the law of, of action and uh, that everything has uh, a cause and a uh, result of the cause. So when you, when you know these things and you, you try to meditate on, uh, in the present moment, be in the present moment and you are mindful in your daily life, then you will notice that in the short term, from in, in only this life, you will notice that there is this kind of karma existing, happening, that what you do has a result, that nothing what you do or say or even think can be without a result. And the result comes either from within you or from outside of you. So um, you um, can this, what you understand in daily life, just transfer, if you want, to 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 the larger scale um, in in terms to understand it on on the conventional level. Now, um, there is the, the, the other level, the, um, <laughs> no, I forgot the word, it's not the unconventional level, of course. Ultimate. Ultimate, uh, the ultimate level. Um, There, you would say that um, the that there is nothing that exists ru uh, truly, but that there is still something continuing. We had the other time um, the mm, example of an apple. That is, that is eaten and the seed falls on the ground and grows. And then <coughs> from the seed, when the conditions are uh, in favor, another apple will grow. So you can't say that one apple is the same as the other. And you can't say that one apple is mother or father to the other. But still there is something that is um, inherent in the first apple, 
which makes the second apple to arise. Without the first apple, the second apple wouldn't be there. Um, and so you, you, you understand by, by thinking of this example that there needs to be a cause, a reason, something, and then something happens. In short term or in large term, in short scale or in large scale. So when you uh, when you think from, from one life to the next, or uh, then don't start to consider or to ponder over, oh, when did it start? The Buddha really um, discouraged to, to ask these que questions because they don't lead to enlightenment. But um, if you accept there must, be, must have been a uh, beginning somewhere must have started and from from then on it evolved and continued you just can imagine yourself no that's wrong not yourself but you can imagine um, something there which um, is called in Pali terms bhavanga there's the Sota Bhavanga and the Shita Bhavanga. This is the, the either the um, some live stream Sota Bhavanga. We would say um, more like it's like a live stream, or Chitta Bhavanga is more uh, like the subconsciousness. So um, this is there, like a, a string. And um, the moment you notice something and it comes to consciousness, it would be like a pearl that you put on the string, that you put on the live stream. Um, and um, so one pearl, one bead, is there first and then comes the next and it's building up and the first bead and what is uh, maybe stored is not a good word for it because there is no storage room mm. but what there is in not existing uh, that will be uh, a, a base for what is going on from one life to the other life. So um, you, you you don't need to believe that. And um, but when you meditate, you might may find out that it is like that. Well, one, just one other thing, if I can just briefly touch on this idea of, of how do we know. Because it's it's interesting because you're kind of giving, well, it's, or it's kind of not related. The idea that, or, I mean, there's something obvious that sticks out to me here, that the, the idea that the mind doesn't continue in further rebirths. The truth is the mind doesn't continue from one moment to the next. It arises and ceases. Mind is just knowing. And so in that case, I could turn the tables and, and ask you, how do you know that the next moment is going to exist? Or, 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 or at least we could say, by the same logic, no? that we know that the next moment exists, or by the same um, premise, the same, th through the observation that one mind can create another mind, and can in fact create uh, a habitual string of minds. So for instance, the cultivation of anger will lead to the habit of, ang of anger. When people come to practice meditation, they find intense anger coming out from the past. And even though they're not 
they they know that it's wrong and they're not keen to be angry they they can't stop the anger because uh, because of the habit so we can see that this is going on so the idea that this might uh, occur at the moment of death and that there might as a result of some power of one mind ca cause a, another mind in a different way or in in some other way it's not really a far far leap mind is able to create for further minds. The theory of it is simply that the moment of death is somewhat special because if there is no creative force in the mind then there will be no, there, there will not arise, there can't arise the next mind. So if someone is enlightened and as an arahant at that moment there will be the cessation of, of this stream of consciousness and there will be no, ar no further arising. Uh, th throughout our lives, there are many kinds of minds that can arise. Not only mind-created minds, body-created minds, or, or so on. There are many, many different causes. And during our life, as Palanyani was saying, explaining about bhavanga and so on, this is caused by various forces, not just the mind. So it's not just one mind that creates the next, but the mind has the power to do this. And at the moment of death, if there is no such impulse, no such volition in the mind, then all the other forces stop working. And and, and because the, this final potential cause isn't there, then there's no rebirth. But if there still is craving at the moment of death, that is a sufficient cause to create a future mind, even without the physical causes of consciousness and so on. The body can create consciousness, if I'm not wrong, there's many the body can create consciousness, consciousness can create physical reality, and so on. Uh, but at any rate, there are many causes of consciousness, not all of which are previous consciousness. So, uh, that I mean, it, it, it really is just a continuation or a, another example of what we already see, mind creating mind. So it's not really difficult to understand, I don't think, or to... Obviously, we don't know. You know, you'll have to wait till you die to find out for sure, but it's not categorically different from what is happening already. I was just thinking of, of computers and how they work. Like for me, it's a miracle. I, I do not understand how that works. <laughs> that, that, uh, and uh, the information that, that we put in here or the, what we say here or, or, or what I type sometimes, transforms, I don't know, I have heard in ones and zeros and endless lines of ones and zeros and then it goes out somewhere and, and gets to another point and, and it's there. And um, uh, I want to take this as an example that people before computer would have exist would not have believed that it is possible and I do not believe it's possible but still it is possible um, just I don't know how that works mm. that's a really good explanation for people wondering about many of the of life's psychic phenomena or phenomena the things that go on in in the mind um, a very good example we don't know how it works but you know who are we <laughs> Uh, or or we don't believe it, or we don't have any proof, but you know, what? And and in the meantime, that is an important point. It's not stored somewhere. The mm. there the the zeros, ones, and zeros are just somewhere in uh, in space or <laughs> wherever. Mm. They are not existing. They are not really existing, and so is the mind not really existing. And and we try to to have a mind that. That is something, mm. and we we really have to get rid of that thought. We have to let go of of the idea that the mind is something. It is just like the ones and zeros, mm. nothing. <laughs> but still, there is something. In the end, comes out. Moments. <laughs> 